And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Sunday, March the 20th, 2022. The global session is basically starting out unchanged, slightly higher, slightly lower, but basically pretty flat as the market waits for direction. And uh, that's going to come from much bigger players than I guess that are out there waiting. So <clears throat> let's update the situation. Friday's trading was astounding. The markets just began to move higher. They weren't going to stop. They continued and they moved strongly higher in that last hour, which really lent the reasons over to that it was a monthly expiration. And that puts it in what they consider quadruple. So just options and the futures options and all kinds of options were expiring on Friday. In fact, in the report that uh, Zero Hedge had put out, there were $3.2 trillion worth of assets, worth of, of um, derivatives that were going to be expiring. And a lot of the change in cash, a lot of the turning in the stock, a lot of it just being settled out, but it was $3.2 trillion worth of, that's huge. That's a lot of money, a lot of positions. And conversely, that uh, 2.2 trillion or 2.6 trillion of that was on the opening. So all of that was in the S&P and the SPX. The ES and the SPX options, they all, they have a morning expiration and an afternoon expiration. So that was the kind of money that was sitting in there. So that first hour, that first half hour saw higher volume and the market's being pushed just in, in, to the upside. And then the balance came out on uh, Friday's close. Now, the market in the S&P did break above, and I'm starting here on the four hour chart, it did break above that 14, uh, excuse me, 44, oh, come on, 16, 19 level. And that did then push the count out to where this could not be the minor wave two. As you can see, the way we've got it labeled minor wave one, that was minor wave two. That minor wave two has now been pushed out. So if we can just open this up, uh, computers, be my friend today, please be my friend. I'm gonna open that up again so we can just get out and I wanna take a cleaner look at this. Let's start it from there. And you can see that just these pushes. So essentially we still have intermediate wave one, intermediate wave two of that larger decline and that this is still minor wave one and minor wave two remains in progress. So with that break, that turns, that puts that high, which was a minor wave two completion point to the minute wave A. And we did an ABC down and the low from last Tuesday, Globex, Tuesday into Wednesday's Globex session at 41.18.75, that becomes, excuse me, that's not even correct, is it? It's 4129.75. That becomes uh, minute wave B. So we're in this minute C wave. Now I'm going to go down to the one hour chart. We can take a look at what's on going on inside. So here we have the minute C wave, which is going to consist of five waves of sub minute degree, right? As labeled one, two, three, four, we're in five. And there weren't any real corrections of note. As you can see, look at that, that's Friday. I just, did, we didn't get, I mean, that was a little bit of downside. So I don't know if we call that a one and this is a two and that's a three and that's a four and this is a five, I don't know. Or do we still have more upside? I don't know. We have to allow for all of it. So let me just pull this back out so I can again look at that, that hourly. So what I've now done and included is that I've updated the Fibonacci extensions for the C wave. Before we had run that C wave from this position, as we were believing that it was a sub-minute or just a, yeah, or a minute level, wave two. And uh, so, but now we've moved that up and now it is a minor C wave to complete a minor wave two. And that goes from the bottom of, of minor one to the top of the A wave to the bottom of the B wave. And that gives us the estimates for the top of the C wave. So on that break above, 
4419, excuse me, you can see I just completed the NASDAQ, can't you? Uh, 4419, and so that changed the count and that was fine. So now we're into here. The 100% level where wave C would be equal to wave A was 4447, pretty strong. And that really would have been a place for it to complete. But what I'm thinking is that this, this was not necessarily flat, but kind of flat. And this is more of a zigzag. Now that zigzag would pretend that we still possibly have additional upside. So our next resistance comes in at 45.23. And above that, we have 45.69.70. But the 1618, where wave C would be 1.618 1 times the length of wave A is 46.44. Now let's go back to that four hour chart because we now have to pay attention to this. So if it were to get itself up to 46.44, that would negate, negate this intermediate wave two. That brings about the alternate view whereabouts this becomes a an intermediate wave a intermediate wave b this becomes intermediate wave c and underneath it gets a primary wave a and that this is intermediate wave a intermediate wave b and we're getting an intermediate c wave to complete a primary wave b that being the case primary wave B could definitely get up to this level. In fact, it could get up to this level. In fact, if it's going to be an irregular, it can shoot up above 4808. Now, I'm not expecting any of this. I think the reality of our economy, of inflation, of interest rates, of what's happening geopolitically, is going to come back and smack all of what we're doing. So I think that, that it, and, and honestly, I, I hate to say it, but I think it, it's a giant setup. I think that, that what we saw last week was nothing more than just large firms knowing that they had such huge amounts of money to come off uh, out of positions come Friday that they weren't going to do it down there because I guess the losses were too great. So they pushed it back up to where they could uh, live with the prices that things were being taken off. That's my take. So that being the case, if that is the case, then what's the reason to keep it up now? It would be really strange. So if we get back into tomorrow, or even you know, by the time the Asian markets open and the European markets open, and then things could change. If we're gonna get upside, you've got where our resistance points are. And I'd be looking for this just being an extended fifth wave up, and that we've got those levels. Now, otherwise, if it's going to start to go down, number one, it's got to break below that four. That sits up pretty high. Then it's got to break 44, 37, 44, 12, 43, 79, 80, 43, 75. And I mean, it's got to break it. The pressure has to be we're turning and we're going down. I would think that we take everything that we did on Friday that would be right out, of the, right out of the gate, boom, done. And essentially you're just dropping this 90 points. That would be a drop in the, the S&P, but just, just think that we are also seeing calls that people talk about this, that, that this is gonna be a crash. It's gonna be, you know, the markets are gonna be caught up with themselves and that the markets could lose 80% of that or drop 80%. That's a huge, huge, huge drop. I'm not looking for quite that much, but, I think that we need to see on the hourly chart, if this is done and I'm gonna put a C wave and a minor two, then it is gonna be a minor third wave and it should just kick in and the kickoff would be boom, 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 boom. It would be one, two, three, four, five. If that initial five down on the hourly, which would give the support that this is complete and that we're into the next down cycle, the next down wave. So what do we got going on for tomorrow? We have potential for an upside, continue to allow for it. If they dare come in as strong as they did on Friday, 
you buy the breakouts. That was the evidence that was presented to us on Friday. Look at the strength in this or the steepness. Now, that kind of puts a pause in my trading. I don't necessarily, because I think when it does turn, it's just going to be smash. See how steep this all is? I mean, I have to open it up, but it's still, it's very steep. It's, it's tracking the four on the way up. It hasn't still, has not broken below the four. It gets down, takes a look at it and goes, nope, and they buy it back up. So, you know, it's gotta go if it's gonna go. It can't sit and pause. Pausing means they're waiting for the buyers to come back in. Now, whether that happens or not, somebody's gotta come in and get this thing going. But that's what's gonna happen. Either way. Okay, so upside, we have the resistance levels. We'd still be looking for additional new highs, about 44.66, about 44.70, upward sounds of 45. So we're looking for a break above 4,500 and then start to find resistance to complete at 45.23 to 45.70. Downside, if it's gonna kick in, it needs to do it with purpose. In other words, boom, breaking down, hitting, bids breaking below the eight and the 20 and then the 50 getting taking this back as if sorry guys it didn't exist that's my scenario we are pretty oversold on the hourly chart and let me just take a look at the daily to include where daily positioning is what would be next up really for the daily is it it broke above and closed above the 50 and the 200. That's a very positive move and it broke well above. So we'd be looking for it to break back below those to give an a counter confirmation that this was nothing. So right now the daily is putting on some pretty positive vibes. And now if we get these to start moving above, First, the 50 needs to get above the 200, and then all of this needs to follow suit. Right now, that's not happening. Okay, so that's the whole story. Uh, trade smart, trade the price action. Uh, don't get married to any positions because the market is definitely not kind, either to the upside or the downside. You might think it's still gonna go up and then you buy into it and they just slaughter it on the way down and you could end up losing a great deal of money. Play what's in front of you. Be fluid, keep stops in mind, play with the moving averages, play with the, with the resistance and support that we have and play with what those larger possibilities could be. Next update will be Monday the 21st.